Schools Over Now What podcast, uh, where I've interviewed some of the biggest names on the planet, from Grant Cardone to Ed Milet to Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles. And now what I do is I help entrepreneurs build a brand through podcasting. So I'm excited to be here with you guys. Excited for anybody who's ever checked out Schools Over Now What. You already know what we're about to do here with Oliver. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you, whoever and wherever you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Oliver Perry, and today I've got a guest who is the host of the Schools Over So Now, uh, the Schools Over Now What podcast. He is also the co-founder of the very first podcast conference on Clubhouse called Podcast Culture. He's also the creator of Podcast Secrets Revealed, a North Carolina native. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to introduce you to my man, Sean Anthony. Sean, what's, what's up, man? bro? I'm, I'm glad to be here. First off, man, your background, your, your whole vibe setting is official. Appreciate Let's it, bro. It. <laughs> I appreciate Let's it, man. It. I appreciate it. Listen, I want to make sure first thing we do is give the audience some context of who you are, what you do, and what makes you so great, in my opinion. So I'm going to let you go ahead and, and spit your background story real quick. Yeah, man, I'm a kid from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and I think what's so crazy for me is that now I have this podcast, the School's Over Now What podcast, uh, where I've interviewed some of the biggest names on the planet, from Grant Cardone to Ed Milet to Beyonce's dad, Matthew Knowles, and now what I do is I help entrepreneurs build a brand through podcasting, so I'm excited to be here with you guys, excited for anybody who's ever checked out School's Over Now What, you already know what we're about to do here with Oliver, so I hope you guys enjoy this episode. I love it. I love it. All right, Sean, let's jump right in, man, because I we've been after this for about a week and a half now, <laughs> trying to get this thing laid out, and I'm super excited to have you on. I wanted to start with something that you actually asked one of your guests in one of your first, to- I think your first three or four podcasts. You asked, mm-hmm. what did you learn in the last 12 months? And, and this, I'm asking this question because you've done a lot in the last 12 months. So <laughs> talk to me, Sean, what have you learned in the last 12 months? Wow, man, good question. I'm doing research. Um, I, I would say in the last 12 months, I learned really like the value of, of building a community, right? Mm-hmm. Like the real value of, of building a community. I mean, obviously a lot's ch- changed in the last 12 months if you're in the U.S. Uh, listening to this. This is around the time where we very first start hearing about COVID. Um, so for me, it was like switch it up. I couldn't travel to all these big names that I've done in the past. I had to reinvent how I was going to do it. And that was really focusing on like what we're doing now, these virtual interviews and building relationships. So in the last 12 months, I got to say that, man, the the value in building a community um, when Clubhouse was created uh, was something that also changed the game on how I was going to move. Clubhouse, I got the invite. Uh, Shout out to Nikki S., who's head of media uh, for Eric Thomas. She sent me an invite. said, Sean, check this thing out. And quickly, I was trying to figure out what was my play going to be on that. So I created a community called Podcast Secrets Revealed, and I'm just uh, excited about that community, excited to see so many podcasters and people all coming together. Uh, Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern on Clubhouse, but most importantly, just so much value uh, in networking. So I would say by far, that's the biggest thing. Mm, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm actually a part of uh, quite a few of the things that Sean's been doing. And I got to tell you, the, the amount of value that you guys give off in the clubhouse rooms and on your IG, I'm assuming, you know, you're going to do some bigger, long, super long form videos and drop those bad boys on YouTube. I have zero doubt in my mind that the amount of content and the amount of value that comes from those content is astronomical and people should be paying attention and watching what you're doing because it's, it's a huge thing. Now, you also mentioned a couple times, you used to mention during one of your podcasts, you actually mentioned that you used to do a lot of the promotion stuff and you used to do a lot of that stuff in college and coming out of high school. Uh, what I wanted to ask you in one of those discussions, you mentioned that you count money different now than what you used to. And I know this is a little bit off the podcast topic, but I think it's important because the money that we get from podcasting, from YouTube, from IG, from wherever can be used to greatness but you got to know how to how to count it, how to deal with the money. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about how you changed how you count, how you changed how you saw money and how you counted money. Oh man, this is crazy. You gonna make me go back and listen to it? <laughs> I, I, I think uh, I, I think like like 
I come from parties, fam. I come from right. parties. And, right. and, and and for the audience that's listening right now, listen, guys, at 14, I was living a different life. My brother went off to college, becomes this big nightlife party promoter. And so at 14, I would go to North Carolina a and and I would go party with him. It would be some of the biggest artists on the planet, whether it was Rick Ross, Young Jeezy, you name it. Uh, so at 14... Back in those age, you know, I, I saw how to network, how to communicate, how to, you know, work with people. And I took those same strategies back to my hometown in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And I started throwing parties and I threw a graduation party. I threw a graduation party one night at the age of 14 for 18 year olds. I can't even imagine like somebody 14 doing it now, but I did it and I made over $6,000. So I went off to college and I said, you know what, I'm going to chase a bag. Um, so I was a huge nightlife party promoter at Winston-Salem State university but back to your question i looked at money back then like quick hits like quick hits right like cool thousand thousand two thousand three thousand i looked at like quick hits i was doing you know three parties a week party on thursday a party on friday a party on saturday and they were themed fam like like thursday i knew it was a college night friday i knew i would do an artist saturday i knew there would be some type of theme maybe even a, a, a i think you should call them um like a pre-dawn, right? It's one of those like all night parties, right? <laughs> so the money I was getting, I was looking at it differently, but you also had to protect yourself. You also had to make sure you're okay. You know, one bad night, it could be something that can go wrong and it can mess all the money up. You know, right. I mean, I've had huge events and we would have a bunch of fraternities and sororities and something to go wrong and we got to stop the party because everyone gets to fighting. So the money I do now in terms of podcasting, I look at it and I count it differently because I'm more strategic about it. Right? I'm more, when I say strategic about it, I turn the podcast into a business. You know, instead of just you know talking every single week, I start realizing that people, what they were interested in was learning more from me. And I figured out, okay, if that's the case, how can I put this and package it in a way where it's sellable, which is where now I help others elevate their voices. I have other people figure out how to position themselves, but most importantly, present themselves on social media. Right. Right. That's, um, man. So basically really what you did was pre pretty much took the, the same lessons you learned from doing the club scene into podcasting because that's absolutely, it's, that's, it's the same, it's the same, same game, right? It's yeah. the same game. You think about like, like this too. I mean, every, every time you do a podcast episode, you have to title an episode. Mm -hmm. I had to title and theme every party, right? Like it, it, every time you do a podcast episode, you have to promote it. I had right. 40 member street team, Back in college, beating on doors, promoting parties. So it, 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 it just went in line so well, man. And I think the part that's missing is that as you do things in life, you'll start learning what you're good at. And people will just start reassuring you and telling you. And I start paying attention to what people were saying. And I just started applying pressure to it. So that brings up an interesting question, though, as well, Sean, because you, like you said, there's you'll hear stuff from people all the time, right? You'll hear some some great things. How do you differentiate what's good versus what's bad when that conversation comes up? You gotta figure out where is it coming from. So like like when I went when I went to college, right? Like I realized everybody started graduating, they started leaving. So when they started yeah. leaving, I realized, yeah, I can't be throwing parties forever. I gotta switch it up. So I took all those skills I had and I went corporate. So when I went corporate, I was promoted six times in four years. And I started paying attention to the people that were paying me. I start paying attention to the, the meetings I would have or the presentations I would give in front of huge CEOs and I just watch their mouth drop. I'm like, yo, why are they, why are they feeling this so much? Why are they paying attention so much? Why are they, why they keep promoting me so quickly? But I also started watching what I was getting on reviews. So this is a, a good secret, a good tip for anybody right now that's listening who's thinking about being an entrepreneur or thinking about pursuing any goal that you want. Pay attention to what your job, whoever your boss is, what they say in your yearly review. They might say things to you that you didn't even know, you know, was even in your ability. I kept seeing things when I got exceed expectations. They would say, yeah, you collaborate very well. You connect with people. People gather around. You can get anybody to, to do anything and, and kind of figure out what's the best solution. And I said, okay, I collaborate well. I connect well. That tells me, if, even if I use my voice, I could reach an audience. Most importantly, I could reach people to collaborate and work with me. So I would say that's the biggest secret right there, fam. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> for those of you who are listening or watching, I, I want you to understand that what Sean is speaking about is 100 percent the same thing that you're going to hear him say over and over and over again. And that is part of that self-awareness, 
knowing what's going on, not just with you, but your environment. So the fact that you took that from those corporate, the corporate, let's just call them suits to be gentle, the corporate suits sitting around the table <laughs> and they're all excited and looking like, oh man, this guy's amazing. And you had to figure out what that was. That reverse engineering, I think is really, really key. So with that, with that out the way, let's, um, let's go back into podcasting a little bit, right? Yeah, so in podcasting, there's a lot of prep that goes on beforehand and people don't understand. I didn't understand until I started doing it. There's a lot of stuff goes into podcasting beforehand. How are you yeah. prepping for your podcast interviews when you go in? Cause you're not, you're not uh, interviewing small names. You're interviewing big names. So how do you, how do you go through your prep for your podcast? Uh, my preparation, man, it, 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 I'll tell you in the beginning, I, I wasn't as prepared as far as a sequence. Now I have more of a format. So I think like with, with the show, I think in the beginning stages of a podcast, you're just trying to make it to the next episode. So you're like, do right. I got another interview? <laughs> do I got to I gotta go do a solo fact. real quick? <laughs> yeah, so right. I had to come up with a formula, fam. And the formula was, the formula now is, uh, we ha I'll have a solo episode. Mm -hmm. I'll do an extra credit Friday where I revisit a past conversation. We repurpose it in under five minutes or less. Um, and then I'll go to two guest interviews. So now I know, okay, solo, extra credit, two guests. And that's the new formula. It's like almost mm -hmm. like the routine. Um, but as far as preparation for it, um, I look and see, okay, who's on the calendar. Um, I like to try to have all interviews on either the same day or not, or, or not too many in a week. Cause right now with the, with clubhouse coming out, I have so many episodes that are already done, like interviews that are already stored in drives. Um, and they're just waiting for that time frame to be released. But as far as who I'm speaking with, I like to do a little bit of research, but not too much. I like to go in with a lot of curiosity. Because mm. curiosity will really capture, you know, the listener's ear because they don't know right. nothing unless they're like a huge name, like they're like Beyonce's dad, Matthew knows. Of course, you know, yeah. you know something about him, right. you know, but but everybody's not on that level, no matter how big they are. And for me, I'm so for the culture. I'm so for diversity. Even when I bring these big names on, mm. they may have never heard of them. Like when I, when I say that, like I, I could bring Grant Cardone on. There's a lot of people who know who Grant is, but there's a lot of people who look like me and talk like me who has no idea who he is. That's a fact. So you got to gotta make these people human. I, I would say curiosity always wins. So I don't never over prepare. There's probably three questions in my head that are just mm -hmm. standard questions. Um, but besides that, it's strictly a freestyle. Yeah, I, I've always been a fan of the freestyle format. Because to me, if, if the conversation is not flowing, if it's not a comfortable conversation, what what else are we here for? Like, I'm just quizzing you. That's we, we did that in high school and college. I'm not going back to that. So, all yeah, right, so yeah now, you got to you got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with it, too. Absolutely. Like before I interviewed before I interviewed um, Grant Cardone in Miami the night before, fam, I was in the club. <laughs> the night before, I was in the club, so that there was a part. There was there was a part where like like there was a part when I'm interviewing him, we face to face. Back in my mind, in my head, I'm like, man, I don't think I feel that well, but let's keep right. this thing rolling. <laughs> keep this thing rolling, because you don't want to be so stiff. You want to be who you are. So I was right. I was seriously in the club right before I got to him. I love it. I love it. I, I'm not judging, man. I think that's the that's good. That's good interview prep, as far as I'm concerned. That's fantastic <laughs> interview prep. All right, man. So, so let's Alrighty. talk a few a few more details. Um, so, when I look at when I do a lot of the research, and I, I just and not just for this particular episode, but just in general, and I'm looking at people and how they're how they're producing things and how they're putting things out. One thing that's always really curious to me, and I think we've talked about this before on Clubhouse, is how are you cultivating that relationship with a guest after the podcast is over? Because I think that's one thing that we don't talk about enough. And it's a really tricky thing because everybody's not going to, you know, everybody's not going to be a friend. It is what it is, but you always want to put out that, that olive branch, if you will. So how are you cultivating those relationships after the podcast is over? Yeah, it starts, it starts in a couple of ways. Um, before the interview actually happens, like before you actually press the record button, have a little small talk. Um, and then before, and then when the, when the best conversations I've ever had with people is when the interview is over. So I got out, the interview is over and we're still, having like crazy, crazy different dialogue. Yesterday I interviewed uh, Bradley, right? Bradley's big and a whole lot of spaces, light speed, you name it. He kind of compared to Grant Cardone a lot, but he'll tell you he's the number one bestseller closer in the entire planet. So the vibe was so smooth in the beginning and then the vibe was so smooth in the interview. The interview actually went to an hour. After the interview, check this out. We were doing song battles. We were going from <laughs> song for song. Like, nah, yo, listen to this. 
Like, nah, nah, nah. Listen, did, wait, nah, you nah, did nah, your listen, own listen. verses, is what you're saying. You did your own verses. We did our own verses. We did our own verses. <laughs> we, did our own, we did our own verses. <laughs> it was crazy. I, I was like, nah, you need to play that big Sean bigger than me. And he was like, nah, you need to hear that NF. And he was doing the, you know, he, he was doing the hey, you know, Alexa, all that stuff. And right. it was crazy. You know, that, that went on for like 20 minutes. So I'm like, oh, man, we got I got a road, man. What are we doing? But um, but it, it starts there, man. And I would say really, and I say really, and you'll know when you're interviewing somebody. And I, I, to me, the leverage has really been getting them off of social media and, and exchanging mm-hmm. contacts and phone numbers. So like even before the interview even started, um, we, we were talking about something. And I was like, all right, I seen a message about that. He was like, nah, send me a text. Because that messy stuff gets a little wicked. You know, like, right. it goes all over the place. Um, so yeah, I would say, I would say start off before you do the interview, after you do the interview. And if you get to the point of exchanging contacts and phone numbers, that's how you really can build a relationship and everybody communicates differently. Here's the, I want to say this because it's so important. Um, you'll be surprised how some of these people communicate. Like I remember knowing that, you know, uh, Dr. Matthew Knowles was about to drop a podcast. I've interviewed a guy like three times already prior to knowing that. So I sent him a text and I was like, yo, congrats on the podcast Congrats on, cause I saw it was kind of congrats right. on the podcast. It's coming. Shout out to you know iHeartRadio Radio for you doing that. Um, I think that's that's dope. And I got a, I got a crazy community over at Clubhouse podcast. Secrets revealed. Just let just let me know. We, we'll, we'll you know bring you on on Clubhouse. See how, see how the response is. He ain't text back. He called me. That's how he communicates. It doesn't it, like wow, okay. he, he will call you. Oh, you know cool. what I'm saying? So it's different, right? And then like, I mean, everybody's different. I got another guy, Garen Jones, who I just brought on Clubhouse last Monday. Um, He'll call you, but he'll FaceTime you. <laughs> so, that strategies are different, man. Like, yeah, that is you like, Because you don't want to deny him. You're like, well, I, I look kind of crazy just right. you know, pressing and ignoring him. So let me pick this up. So, right. Everybody's different, man. Listen, man. Listen, I, I, will, I will tell you that I would attest to that. That is an absolute fact. I actually had a conversation one time with Nikki. And we're talking, but for like, the, she FaceTimed me. And I didn't know. Now, nobody talked about Shout out to Nikki Saunders, uh, mentor leader of deeper than the brand uh she facetimed me and i didn't know the camera was on right so my camera was off and she's just on camera the whole time so i man i felt like such an old man i get back on that thing and she's been on camera for like a, a half an hour and i'm like oh you gotta be kidding me yeah yeah, <laughs> but yeah, man, yeah. that communication is everything absolutely uh, absolutely we can, we can so go. next Love you um so you just finished and we'll get back to podcasting later, but this is one, the one thing that I've been excited. Like I said, I'm excited to talk to you today. And one mm-hmm. of the things that I was excited to talk about was this podcast culture event that you just got finished doing. Yeah, man. It's done now. It's done. We'll, we'll go into what happened before. I want to know how you feel right now, now that this bad boy, because it's relatively fresh in your mind. It just happened this past weekend. I'm sure you've been asked this before, kind of in private, but I wanted to ask you, I guess really on camera on on pod what is the feeling like now that it's over and then and then for that matter what's next what, what are you going to do next because that was a big that's a big rock to knock down yeah man first uh i feel good is over because boy that thing took a lot of work and <laughs> <laughs> hey well i was like lord have mercy it was a time like like people don't know man like we was pushing that day a lot like, like right. there was one time it was like Yo, let's do it in january you know let's do it in february now like uh, uh, let, I got a baby cut. Let's let's do it in March. So, I think I think it was like because yeah, I think about it. Like me and my guy, two time Emmy Award winner, shout out my guy Mario Armstrong. Man, we are very busy. So like so to coordinate our schedules and then to coordinate an, an event that actually has like programming. Mm-hmm. You know, we we knew we needed the right help. You know, so shout out to Carlette who hopped on with the Pure Point Group. Uh, she hopped on and then her team came on behind the scenes to help us shape this thing. Um, and, and we put it together. So first off, I feel excited that it's over because uh, right. I know how much work it took. But also I feel like, yo, that was crazy for like for like the culture, for the diversity. We had Latina X. We had black pod creators. We had uh, the Asian community. We had uh, Nielsen, um, the vice president, Lipson, um, NPR, Tiny Desk. Ah oh, man, it, it, Amy Porterfield. <laughs> yeah, so that for, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. in person, that of it. That's crazy. So, uh, I, I'm just excited it's over. But most importantly, I'm excited because it had the most diverse. And I'm gonna stay on this because there's a lot of podcast clubs out there. Not knocking them. I rock with a lot of them. Um, I think they're great people. But there's mm-hmm. a energy and a vibe 
that's different with Podcast Secrets Reveal. And there's an energy and vibe that Podcast Culture Conference just showed versus, I'm bold enough to say this now that it's over, versus all of these other conferences. That was a different energy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yes, yes, energy. it was. That thing was that thing was intense. And matter of fact, uh, the Lat- I think the Latino community was on there as well. They had their own yeah. little section of, man, when I started hearing some of those names being dropped, I'm like, wait a second, what is going on here? When old boy <laughs> from um, well, the guy from um, Tiny Desk came on and he just started because again, I was driving. I'm I'm in the vehicle driving. I had to go check out a property. And I'm hearing the guy, and he's like, he is not kidding. He is dropping everything he can give. So, mm-hmm. I, and I don't know if you guys did a re- did you do a replay of that? No, no, it's no re- it's, it's, oh. it's, We have the whole thing recorded. The whole thing is recorded. Ooh, the whole, thing, right. the, the whole, the whole thing is recorded. Um, um, we have a, a, the whole thing of notes as well mm-hmm. uh, that we can, that we can package up. Yeah, so everything was documented. Uh, every, like the stats are all there. Dude, that that pitch is crazy. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be crazy but I, man i'm telling you the next thing you say yeah what's next the next yep. thing um it's, it's the in person it's the in person there were so many like behind the scenes there were so many like brands and sponsors trying to pay us for the for the, what you just saw but we didn't want to do it wow. Wow. and the reason why we didn't want to do it then is because we're like yo let's get the concept right down right then let's package it because now we can package it we can package it like crazy I love it. I love it. That just made me excited. Listen, I'm a, I'm a on record right now. I'm volunteering. You let me know when and where I need to be there. I'll be the, listen, you need a janitor. I will mop up every <laughs> floor in that building. I got you covered, brother. All right. I appreciate <laughs> so, that, bro. <laughs> so let's talk about, um, let's go back to more of your interview techniques. So you yeah. do a lot of interviews, bro. Like a lot of interviews. And for somebody who's learning, who's getting into the interview flow of things and been doing it for a little bit now, maybe 23, 24 episodes. I want to know what is your favorite interview technique that you have seen and now you're practicing to, to kind of master it. Uh, the, my favorite is like, give someone a question that really makes them get emotional. Mm-hmm. Like, 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 like that really makes them get emotional. Um, that's a technique I was interviewing, um, I knew exactly what I was doing. I was interviewing, uh, this is it's not even out yet, man. This is one of the changes. <laughs> I was interviewing the casting director for Shark Tank, Mindy. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and uh, and I asked her, and I kind of knew me, I know I kind of knew me personally what I thought the answer would be, but it's always good to hear their, their answer. And so Absolutely. I said, out of all those episodes of Shark Tank, all those people that walked in and out of that room, What's like that one person or one group of, of people who presented in front of the sharks that really shook the room and left everybody ready to either cry or most importantly, couldn't even figure out what to do next. And she immediately, like her whole body language changed. She she even started almost like she was about to cry because it took her back to the actual setting time, she right. brought up. Yeah, she brought up the, the, these kids who, um, who mom had died from cancer who dad ran a business that was, uh, and he had died from 9-11. He was a firefighter oh. and they were carrying a legacy. You can see oh, a whole, whole, whole vibe change. Yeah, you, yeah you that'll change the vibe like, quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. that'll <laughs> change the vibe <laughs> quick. I mean, right. so that was one. And then, I, so I, I like emotion. Like I interviewed uh, Dave Metzler uh, okay. at his house uh, in Laguna in LA. Uh, and when I interviewed him, um, I asked him a question too about like, you know, what's the, what's one of those times when you spoke on stage? He was, he was talking about how much he was getting speaking on stages and all of that, mm. and what's important to him. And I said, well, what, tell me about a time you got off that stage and somebody said something to you, and you and really, you know, made you feel the type of way. And it took him back to this kid who was just waiting, who was going to leave, and heard his voice, who said his, you know, his his speech changed his life. Most importantly, saved it. And you can see the emotion in his, in his eyes. And I'm like, yo. If I get him to cry, this is going. <laughs> it's going it's gold. It's gold. Yeah, yeah. But 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 it's 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 that it's, it's those things, man. It's those things. It's that emotional attachment and making you know people human. Interesting. That's uh. So how do you how did you find that technique? And and on top of that, how do you master that technique? Because that's that's way different than like I'm I'm still learning the pregnant pause. 
<laughs> see, it just did right there. See that? All right. So yeah, so I'm just <laughs> I'm just learning the pregnant pause now, right? Yeah. But that's a that's an advanced technique. That's something you really got to do some digging to figure out what's what. How are you doing that? How do you how do you cultivate that skill? Yeah, it takes it takes time to figure out. Yeah, did I get everything out of them? You know what I'm saying? It, it takes right. it takes time to really think about it. Like the Uncle Dave one was like episode like 44. The Mindy one, which I just did, it ain't, it ain't even out. I can't even put an episode title name on it, guys. I'm at 146 right now. So Let's like, go. so it, it takes it takes it takes time to kind of like really really figure out what it is. But you right. but you can also hear the emotion in people's voices that 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 really you know that that makes you say okay and tell me a little bit more or like those type of techniques. Um, seem seem to work the best. Like, how did you feel in this type of situation? Like, like that that really makes people you know get on the edge of their seats. Mm, I like it. I like it. All right. So, oh man, that's so good. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your not just your format, but how you do things. So one thing that I've noticed with a lot of podcasts is all of us don't necessarily understand how to put the guest and the audience first. And when I say that, I mean, so like when you put something out to promote the podcast, you'll put that person in this big photo with, uh, schools over now, what on the bottom, which mm-hmm. I found really, really, really interesting because it's something, like I said, I'm, I'm looking to learn. I, I pay attention to just that, about everything that I see when you do that, is that calculated? And then how'd you come up with the concept to, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to focus on the guest to allow them the ability to share it on the back end. Oh yeah. You make them, the, make them the, the main focus, the main key, you know what I'm saying? Like, like there's mm-hmm. branding that's going to be involved with colors. Like, you know, I use a lot of black and a lot of yellow. Um, so branding is always going to be involved, but um, I, I make them the, the whole focus. Cause I think about, I've been a guest on so many shows myself. I think about, okay, what have been the shows that I've wanted to share and what have been the shows where I'm like, eh, that's kind of odd. I wouldn't put that out anywhere. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and crazy thing, this might sound funny, man. I remember, yo, I don't know who the guy was. I interviewed with this guy one time and it's, it's a perfect example of what really made me say, oh, you got to put the guest first. And it's like, he, he's sitting this pro this promo image to put on my stories. I think I still might put it on my stories, but I was like, oh, that's kind of odd. He was like on like 75% of it, you know? And, and, and I'm <laughs> like, yo, there. what is like, what is that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to paint them in the light, you know? And it's cool to like, like you can easily do that in so many different ways. You know, you right. can take this interview right now, you know, put your logos all on it and whatever. And I'm, that's something I'm very likely going to share. I'm right here right. with you. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, right. Uh, versus, you know, something like that, I think. So putting the gas first, and then my sharing rate is extremely high. Uh, it's extremely, extremely high from gas. I, I, on, on record, I could probably count maybe one to three people, no, not even three, I could probably count maybe two people who did never share it. Uh, and, and, and my only thought process on why they didn't share it, um, one of them is signed to a company that mm-hmm. controls their Instagram. Yeah. Um, and and then the uh, and then the other one uh, doesn't typically do a lot of sharing because they don't do a lot of interviews. Right. Uh, so that's what I would probably say. And there's people who will shock you in the ways that they choose to share it. So I interview Seth Golden. Seth Golden is a legend. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. a legend. And so I mean, he almost I think had a had a part in creating the internet. Um, so I interviewed Seth and Seth shared me in a way nobody shared me before. He put me on his blog, fam. And you know the thing about Seth, that's the number one thing you want to be on. Yeah, you know? that's so, thing, so yeah. I don't so it's different, like of what's really important. The blog getting on Seth Golden's blog is way more important than an Instagram post. I don't even think he ran his Instagram, but like stuff like that um is where I look at it's how to put them in the best light and make them the focus. That is I didn't, well, granted, I, I knew that I, you know, we, we've, we've been in the same rooms a couple times. I've listened to you quite a bit and I know these things, but it's always good to hear it from you because it's just interesting to, for your level, for that to be something that's a priority to you, to make sure that your guest is the number one person outside of, of course, the audience is always interesting. Um, so something we talked about this weekend during the podcast culture event we talked about finding ways to to market yourself, to get on other podcasts. Yeah. How, when you are on a podcast, 
and you talk to somebody or they're on your podcast and you talk to them and all that great stuff and you guys get that interview done. How are you getting yourself on the podcast? Because that's, that is another way to push your podcast in my belief. And from what I learned, how are you doing that? Great question. No one's ever asked me that. Um, uh, because this might, this might shock you. I don't okay. push myself to be on other podcasts. I, I okay. don't. Um, and, and, uh, and I, I would say do it by far. Do it. And you heard from all those amazing people right, right. at that conference. Um, for me, what I do do is I put myself out there in the best light and I put myself out there. If you get a glimpse, a sneak peek, 10 seconds and you like your boy, I'll be up there. Um, <laughs> And that, that's, a, that's how I that's, am, man. That's the confidence I need. I like that. Hey, I, 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 I'll, I'll be up there, you know, because I think about like even, even 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 my even my connection with Mario Mario Armstrong, like right. fam, like like I did not know him like I know him now. I did not know him prior to Clubhouse. What happened was with Podcast Secrets revealed, we were doing a meeting on a Monday night. Mm-hmm. He was in the audience. He heard. He listened to what I was saying, and he wow. reached out. And then now, of course, that's the big bro, and we've doing doing a lot of things together. But that goes to tell you, sometimes all you need is a platform. Mm. And, and people always say, hey, "Pitch, pitch, pitch, get on the show, get on the show, get on the show, get on the show, get on the show." Mm. And then connections and relationships are the true win. And I'm still learning, and I'm learning so much from these people I'm interviewing because they just telling me everything. <laughs> like you would think I paid them thousands of dollars, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, right. they listen. This Brad Lee one dropped, Brad. It's, it, he was telling me so much. I was like, "Do I owe him some money?" Like, <laughs> this is crazy. you know, I'm cash so, him right after this interview, yeah, because the, the relationships, man, and, and the relationships. Even after that, he's like, "Hey, if you want to be on my show? Let's do it." You know, it, it's it's putting yourself out there and, and being who you are that really right. wins. Because I have people who pitch me all the time uh, mm-hmm. to be on a show, and it's so it's kind of comical because you see very good pitches and you see really, really bad ones. So the really bad ones are the ones that's comical. Um, the reason why I say they're comical is because you can tell that they have not heard a single second of your show. You know, you like, so I, right. my response always be like, for ones I want comical, I'm like, oh, that's great. Can you tell me about your favorite episode? And there's like a dead silence, you know? So mm. I would say that. And there's people who are very strategic and that, you know, they'll find a way, you know, those things. Yeah, yeah. And I think everybody has different types of shows, though, and there's always a, a point where you can use people and having them on your show, but everybody has different types of shows, so be very wary of your pitch, because if you are, have a yoga podcast, a meditation mm-hmm. podcast, or a podcast about baking and cooking, if you go out here and try to get one of these entrepreneurs, they might not be able to relate to yoga. So they're going to like, oh, no, I'm fine. You know, so be very cautious <laughs> right. of who you're pitching. Mm, that's, a good, that's a good point. That's a good point. With that said, though, look, let's ask, let me ask you this. What makes a good pitch? Because we know it makes a bad pitch, obviously. Not being able to answer that question was one of them. But what yeah. makes a good pitch? Yeah, coming into it, doing research, coming into it, uh, be able to, to say something that you really noticed, that you really liked, or could they elaborate on this point and what they may have learned from something. It's like dating. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like really like, like when someone understands that someone's done the research, they're more into giving you more information. Like, like even with this interview you're doing right now, right? You, you told me about some episodes I've done, some things I've said, right? A lot of people don't even do that. You know, they're just like, all right, cool. Let's just hop up here and let's just roll. You know, so it, it gives you more credibility uh, with your pitch. I think that's always key. And then also going into it from an angle of, of why you think you should be on it. You know, like, like and, and sometimes people have amazing stories. You know, right. I get pitched by a lot of different people, whether they have a blue check or not, you know, and sometimes I see blue check verifications and they have fabulous pitches. I just don't, I've never heard of them. I'm like, Oh, well, that sounds pretty sweet. You right. know, and there's sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes there's the people who, who, who are just genuine and it works. Right. I love it. I love it. Let me, ask I tell you, you I, I, I tell you this though, as a podcast Put host, as, mm-hmm. as a podcast host, uh, I, I think, it, there's an admiration where we are just naturally fans of other people. Yeah. And I think that that's what makes us want to have certain people on the show. There's plenty of people I'm just fans of. I'm like, all right, let's, let's, let's have a conversation. Right. Hit them up. Let's see if you can get them on. I love it. I love it. Let me ask you, man. Um, so when doing a podcast, cause you're, you're at the point where you know who your target is, you're, you're driving home the, the, the value, the whole nine for those who are starting 
is it okay not to know your target when you start? And then how do you go about narrowing that in? If you don't, I think you gotta have at least one person you're talking to, to narrow it in. And if you don't know who, you, who if you don't know who your audience is in the beginning, because you're building something, right. um, I think you should just turn on the mic and talk as if you're talking to one person. That one person could be a younger version or a current version of you. That's the secret. And then as you continue to talk that way, the community of people who are feeling the same type of way you're feeling about that subject are going to want to be a part of what you got going on. I love it. I love it. That's some great advice. All right. So Sean, we're going to go into a little sectional, right? Just a little, just a couple questions, a little section to to close this out. Cause I want to be very, I'm always very cognizant of the time and I want to honor your time as well. Cause you've been grateful and uh, gracious enough to come on and I'm super grateful that you came on. So, First thing is we got something I call troop to task. And what troop to task is you give the listener slash viewer one thing that they can do right now to push yourself forward in the path that you're already on. Okay. Uh, one thing I'll tell you right now is you just got to put on the blinders and go. Simple as that. Don't, don't, don't be looking to the left, looking to the right, looking to see what someone else posting, look at looking over here to figure out what someone's commenting or listening to what your auntie or your mommy might be talking about. I want you to really have a goal and just run towards it and, and put the bonnets on. You'll be there. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Next one. This one's a little bit tougher and I, I'm going to need the answer to this question and the answer to the question. Have you answered the question? It sounds confusing right now. Bear with me. All right. So, <laughs> so right. the question is what question do you wish you were asked more often? And that's the question that's going to need you to answer the question after you answer the question. Oh, oh, that's easy. Um, that's what gives you the hunger and the drive and passion to do any, any of this stuff? Uh, and I think I think the, the answer to that is um, figuring out what the why is, right? I have a whole family. Um, I, I come from a family that, that has, I would say, a stop sign. Where they, this, is, this is where they see their life going. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be the stop sign. I want to, I, I want to show, you know, not only my family, you know, my kids, but also people who look like me that you can do a lot more, but you got to have had a hunger, the passion, attach yourself to a why. Uh, and, and most importantly, don't dim your light and people get dim your light wrong. Like, like I, I'm not talking about just tell your story and you know, whatever, when you get in the room, show up and show out. That's how you don't do your life. So when I'm in the room with these superstars, these celebrities, and my leg, Grant Cardone, I promise you, fam, and I know this is because it's the truth. It don't take them long to realize that I am a part and I should be here, but most importantly, I can't correctly. Right. I, I, I can tell you some private conversations where they said something to me, and I was like, yeah, they see it. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's how we coming. That's how we, that's how we coming, man. That's how I we coming. love it. I love it. All right, man. I appreciate you. Thank you again so, so much for coming on. I want to make sure that people can get a hold of you, reach out to you, connect with you, however, wherever possible. Give them, give them all your stuff, man. Let's go. Yeah, man. I, I'm everywhere at Sean R. Anthony underscore. It's only one underscore. I present a couple of fake pages, <laughs> but at Sean R. Anthony <laughs> underscore. Uh, follow us, Schools Over Now What, um, as well as listen to Schools Over Now What on all audio platforms, YouTube, you name it. And we're, we're here to help you, but most importantly, answer the question we all asked ourselves at some point, and that's what's next. Ooh, I want y'all to know that's partly part of what he does on his actual podcast. My man is the king of segues in here. All right, so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please, please, please hit us with a like, the comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. See me on YouTube, IG, at the Oliver Perry. I'm there, and I'm here to help however possible. Let me know. In the meantime, be blessed. And remember, you're better than you were, but you're not half as good as you're going to be. I'll see you next time.